Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're going to be detecting the print nightmare vulnerability or exploit. So in 2021, there was the print nightmare bug that you probably have seen in the news. And for me, I'm going to be replicating that vulnerability in our lab environment with the goal of us learning how the vulnerability worked and also how detection works as far as it's concerned. So our main goal is to learn detection. How does that detection work? Because rarely do we see people actually detecting traffic from malicious activity. We only see people attacking, maybe completing a hack the box machine or digging into things, trying to understand how things work, but rarely do we see that happening together. So I'm going to show you how you can generate these alerts here. As you can see, I already have the pre unusual discovered signals and suspicious print spooler traffic and unusual traffic and the alerts are very high as you can see they're actually high severity so suspicious principal service execution file created how did this happen it all starts right here where this is how we deployed the lab this is called the game of xg directory this is by mayfly i did not create it i just deployed it in my lab and you can find the project on github right here on github.com orange cyber defense and this is by mayfly and the instructions on how to install it are there you can also follow some of my series here if you want but where we are right now is we were able to exploit up to dc02 winterfell we have a user account and let's assume that we're just as a user account that's not an administrator but we found out that the print spooler service is running and is vulnerable so how can we go about it that's where we are going to start this machine just happens to have intrusion detection system so we are able to see what's happening on it and that way when we run our exploit on the victim machine we can come in here and see what did we do and how did we, that happen so this is a very cool experiment and i think it allows us to learn better so let's go and do this so coming here this print print spooler vulnerability was found in 2021 so this was actually on June, June 28th when this was first reported and this allowed threat actors to gain initial access to environments to fully compromise the network and deploy additional malware on ransomware. So this is not a trivial finding that they had there. So here they go ahead and explain how it works. Pretty much it allows us to try to install print drivers using a DAL or any other services. So for us, since we already have the game of Active directory lab we're going to do it justice by we will follow mayfly's official write-up because i thought this was really cool and here for us to try the nightmare in the lab first we need to use maybe in this case he's using crep mac exec i'll use the net exec to identify the spooler how do you know that there is a vulnerable machine in an environment you run something like this with crack map exec but i'll be running it with net exec so let's go ahead and identify it it's the same thing and what this is doing is it's going to go from 10 to 23 and check for the spooler service so after scanning it we can see that um we do have some machines that returned here with sp spooler service enabled so this right here is our victim right now because that's the one that we have credentials for so next we need to make sure that we exploit this machine and they say you can also use you know rpc dump here if you wanted to we can try that this will just reach out to our machine and try to see if we can check for the spooler service and as you can see okay that was for 10 let's try for 11 again all right so as you can see we can verify that the spooler service is running and it's ready for us so once we do that we need the impact scripts um we don't need to do the pull request but the first is he's talking about the dll so prepare the dll I'll actually copy this and we explain what it's doing here. Nano user.c. So that's the one that I copied. I copied this one from the site. This and we explain what this is what, what this is in a second here. Well, first, this is going to be a dot DLL file that will be running on the machine, trying to fool the print service that we are going to try to install something. And in this case, we just write it as a normal windows DLL with a few things we're going to call system here since this is going to be running as a system user we can do this net user evil me password add this will add a user called evil me so it will run these three commands i mean these four commands uh it will add that user to the administrator group that's where the net local group administrators add and uh, am i doing this twice 
net local group administrators if we may add I, I don't know why i'm doing that twice uh but okay maybe i wanted to be sure it should just be one net local group remote desktop users that's very important uh add i want mine to have rdp so i added the remote desktop users here you might even add the commands to enable rdp if it was not already enabled but mine is already enabled so i'm just adding my user to the remote desktop users technically everyone in the administrators group should be able to remote desktop but i wanted to make sure here and then this when compiled into a dll we get a actual dot dll file and in this case we're using ming w so you will make sure that you have this one installed and i pretty much copied that and pasted it in here and when you run it it will actually just succeed in this case uh, mine is called user so let's copy it. copy user.c to be user.dll i mean dot c now i can rerun that command i should end up with now nightmare.dll so ls nightmare.dll now that we have nightmare.dll we need to make sure that we host that nightmare.dll is an smb share so what we can do is copy that path where that dll file is file new tab uh, let's go to it so we can host it as an smb share so smb server.py so what this is doing is it's going to set up an smb server um, that supports smb2 service it's called called attacker share and the dot means host everything that's in here and that's what this is doing and once we do that we just need to go back here and run our um, script well first uh, i might have skipped a step here they say you need to clone the repo after you clone the repo prepare your dll file and then once you prepared your dll file start the smb server and then we can try to exploit it so we can say python 3 cve uh, and then use any user i'm not going to be using this one here i'm going to be using uh tony stack or john snow something like this on winterfell yeah we're going to be using this one here let's copy this and i will explain to you what it's doing so here's what this is going to do this is going to be using python 3 to run our cve exploit.py which is already where we are it's going to go to the north Dot kingdom dot local using john snow's username and password which we found earlier and then it's going to try to visit my kali attacker machine uh, so this ip address here needs to be the one for my kali and for that i will do an ipa grab 192 was mine is 192 so it needs to be this uh 56.104 because you need the ip address needs to be actually the correct one 56.104 okay and nightmare.dll we're going to change that one a little bit let's actually before we start this nano nightmare.c so nightmare.c is going to create instead of evil, evil me it's going to create another user called hacker that way we have uh, a different user hacker here so i'm just changing the user that i'm going to add hacker hacker okay control x y enter just to be sure let's try it with if winner m so with if winner m i'm just going to sign in as an administrator to verify that i don't have a user called hacker so net user before our attack notice that we have all these users here and we don't have a hacker user now let's stay in there okay so we are ready to run we need to make sure that our share is wait waiting and listening so let's exit out of here but before we do that let's actually um uh, recompile so we want to recompile so we make sure that you know our evil me is the correct one so remove nightmare.dll now that he's gone let's recompile him okay now that it's compiled we set our listener and then we come back here we get ready and let's run this one so what's happening here is this is going to reach out to our machine and then the victim is going to reach out back to us on our 
SMB share to download the DLL and in this case it said it succeeded. As you can see, this says it succeeded. First let's verify by using if WinRM and just let's just get in there and check. Net user. Now we should have a hacker user. Okay. So we were able to add a user and add that user to the administrators. Is that true? Net user hacker. And they are part of the administrators and group memberships, the domain users. So this person is now an additional user that not only is better than what we were earlier, but also allows us to have persistence. Well, this is not as exciting as it sounds, right? I mean, we could have followed these instructions here. So where do I add value to your life? Why should you be watching me? Okay, let's go to our Kali Pepo. This is our Defender machine. So if you are looking at our diagram, this will be this Elastic Sim here. So we're coming from DC02. We're sending ev Windows events to this. People don't just add accounts or users without ramifications for that, right? There's consequences. Windows Defender is going to try to detect that. In this case, Elastic Sim is going to de detect that. So let's go and check it out. Well, first, let's look for events in the last, um, okay, sure, last hour. Refresh. We should for sure see when Windows added users. So we should see a Windows uh, alert for a user being added. So user account creation, that's the first one. Well, we created a user and added them to the administrators. That just doesn't go unnoticed by Windows, right? So here, the process was net because we use net user and we were on that machine and we created a user account notice that the severity is low but the co command that we ran is right here net user hacker password add via the command line so this actually was seen and it's documented right there and this one comes with an event id as well and a mitre attack framework this is a user account being created if you go here it's part of the persistence consists of technique where they can add that so it's a low user we expected that but let's see if the actual print nightmare stuff was causing a lot of issues okay unusual uh, parent process notice that they were running is the username system that's how we know that things were interesting suspicious print spooler yeah let's check this one okay so the full event the file with event process as we pull using system <laughs> it ran a file called user.dll that's the one that from earlier and suspicious because i mean it was adding a user so this is actually very good and it's part of privilege escalation it's documented in the meta framework and we can see the full path c windows system 32 spool drivers 32 new user.dll so if a dll file is added as part of this print spooler process it generates a ton of events depending on what you're doing in this case i just wanted to add a user if you were maybe spawning a shell using metasploit that's a whole different uh ball game right Me hopefully the payload that you're running is good all these 35 alerts here are from me just adding a principaler user so let's check one more here's a new so a principaler child process so principaler in the process of in creating the drivers ended up spawning another child process and this one did not like it uh, let's see what this one said oh this is the net user hacker password add again it says suspicious child process because in this case we are actually opening the command line from the spoo.exe so this is again detectable with the process arguments being s s shown here for us which is amazing so I don't know if there's more we can look at here but uh, these are the rules that are in there if you want to take a look at the rules you can as well like unusual spooler child process and see what the rule is doing but in this case we know i mean it's just the spooler process spawning command line which end up running the net command so here's a custom query for the unusual uh, spooler child process so windows spool service calling any of these which happens all the time right uh, so this is actually a very good rule that is detecting us. So I hope you learned something of us just going through a very simple attack, but ending up with a bunch of data here. We can even 
chase down the events by event IDs if we wanted to. But I think with all these rules here, we're happy with the detection that we're doing. If you like this, please remember to like, subscribe to my channel, and also let me know in the comments which other things that we can look at or how we can improve these videos. Otherwise, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you next time.